Hi, my name is Milan, and in this video I want to talk about clean architecture. I'm going to walk you through what clean architecture is and why it's useful, and I'll show you a practical example of setting up a .NET application to use clean architecture with my free template. Let's start by explaining what the clean architecture is and the principles behind it. This is probably the most typical visual representation using the diagram with concentric circles. And based on the color coding here, we have some distinct components, sometimes called layers. So we have the domain, application, presentation, and infrastructure layers. Now, this doesn't have to be layers in terms of separate .NET projects, although that's how it's usually implemented, and that's how it's also implemented in the template. This could also be just folders inside of a single assembly. So there's no strict way of how you should implement this, but there are many implementation approaches, and I'm going to focus on one of them. Now, what is the essence of clean architecture? First, we have our domain at the core of the system. This is where we are going to define our domain entities and our most important enterprise-wide business rules. As for how you should implement this, you can use just simple anemic domain models and a transaction script for your business logic, or you can use a more object-oriented approach where you define your entities together with their behavior to encapsulate the business rules. You will typically see this with examples that use domain-driven design. Then one level above the domain, we have our application, which acts as an orchestrator. This is where we define the use cases of our system, which essentially represent the functionality that we are exposing to the outside world. The use cases orchestrate the domain and tell it what to do to achieve the desired result. Now, we also have to interact with some external components. So this is why we have the infrastructure and the presentation layers, and the application layer is responsible for interacting with these layers, typically using abstractions. Now, this is done to respect the dependency rule, which states that the lower level components, for example, the domain, are not allowed to reference or call out to the higher components. So the domain isn't allowed to directly interact with the infrastructure layer. However, the infrastructure layer is allowed to reference the domain. But what is the benefit of all of this? By isolating the core of the clean architecture, which is the domain and the application layers, from external concerns, we're controlling coupling. So instead of being coupled to an implementation detail directly, like a database or an external service or a messaging system, we can define an abstraction that we can call to represent this external concern, and then we're going to implement this abstraction in the outer layers. This is also a reason why clean architecture isn't a favorite of a lot of developers, because because it leads to a lot of abstractions. Now, you don't necessarily need so many abstractions, and I'm going to show you an interesting and pragmatic approach when we dive into the code, but you should at least try to respect the dependency rule, which states that the lower level components, the domain or the application layer, should not reference the components that are above them in the hierarchy. Another big confusion point I often see is if the presentation layer is allowed to reference the infrastructure or vice versa, and in my opinion, this is completely fine because they are on the same level of abstraction and reside in the outer layers of the clean architecture. Now enough with the theory, let's jump into the code and take a look at a practical example. I'm going to walk you through my free clean architecture template, which you can grab from the pinned comment right under this video, and I'm going to show you one approach to implementing clean architecture. A side note that the template isn't actually free, it's going to cost you your email, but I think this is a small price to pay and I'm not really forcing you to remain subscribed to the newsletter. You can always unsubscribe at any time. Now let's take a look at the source folder and what we have here. You'll notice a couple of projects which should map to the components or layers that we discussed in the diagram. So we have domain, application, infrastructure. The web API actually represents our presentation layer. And then we have this shared kernel, sometimes it's called common, sometimes it's called shared, and this just contains some base abstractions that I want to make available inside of my system. So let's start from the shared kernel. Here I have my entity abstraction, and all I want to do here is just implement support for domain events. I'm not concerned with anything else. Then we have an error type, so I can define failures inside of my system. A couple of abstractions, like the date time provider, a domain event, and here I'm using mediator to simplify the publishing of my domain event. I have a result type so that I can express my failures explicitly by providing a flag or an error, but this is actually mapped with the success or failure methods. Then we have a validation error, which allows me to encapsulate multiple failure conditions if I need such an example. So that's it for the shared kernel, just a couple of useful abstractions that I'm going to use throughout my system. Now let's take a look at the domain layer. This is where we have our entities, and this is a simple to-do application. So in this case, 
I'm using what's called an anemic domain model. My domain entities don't contain any behavior, they just have data, but I'm also defining my domain events, which can be raised when something interesting happens in the system, and then I can react to these events and implement additional behavior. I'm also defining my errors to make my failure conditions explicit, and I think this is a nice approach to document the errors inside of your domain. The same applies for the to-do item. It just contains some data properties, a couple of domain events, when notable actions actions happen inside of the system and then we're documenting the errors and I also have an enum to represent the priority. So I'm going to close all of this down. There's nothing too interesting happening here. The more interesting part happens in the application layer, which is where we have our use cases. So for example, let's take a look at a use case for registering a new user. In this implementation, I'm using the CQRS pattern, which stands for Command Query Responsibility Segregation. And it's mostly about logically separating your write command, your write operations, which is insert, update, and delete, from your read operations represented by the query. So I have a command object encapsulating the data that's required to execute this use case. And then I have a respective handler that's going to take this command, any abstractions that I need, and is going to implement the respective logic. So this is what one use case looks like. You'll notice I'm depending on some abstractions, the database context and a password hasher, and I'm using them to interact with the database. This is actually just a wrapper around the F core, and it's not really an abstraction. It's just a simplified API surface instead of using the database context directly. Now in this example, I'm not decoupled from my database, and honestly, I don't want to be. I know I want to use a SQL database, and EF core allows me to do this, so I'm just going to reference EF core directly without creating unnecessary abstractions. We could even consider the iApplicationDB context interface, which looks like this, an unnecessary abstraction, and simply reference the database context directly. But nonetheless, using this approach allows me to depend on EF core, which is what I want, without having to worry about the concrete database I'm using under the hood. So I could be using Postgres, I could be using EF core, I could be using SQLite, and my application layer doesn't need to know about this. However, you as a developer should definitely know about this and care about the database you're using and extracting the most benefits from it. So going back to our use case, you can see I'm creating a new user entity, raising a domain event, and just using my database context to persist this. If I jump into the implementation for this method, you'll see that I'm first calling save changes async to persist the changes inside of the database, and then I'm publishing the domain events using mediator. So this is the approach I chose, but you can decide which one works best for you. Another thing I want to highlight is the folder structure I'm using here. I'm grouping the use cases based on the higher level abstraction, in this case, the user's concept which they belong to. So I don't have a separate commands or queries folder, I just group them by the use cases, and then the use case name is how I differentiate between commands and queries. Let's take a look at a query, for example, the get user by ID query. Here I have a dedicated query abstraction, which just contains the parameters that are needed to execute this query, and I'm also defining the response type. Then inside of my handler, I can implement the logic that's required to load this response from the database and return it to the client. You can see I have a user context abstraction in this example, and this just allows me to get the user ID of the current user so that I can implement some authorization rules. The implementation for this abstraction is going to live inside of the infrastructure layer. So this is what I was talking about with direction of dependencies and controlling decoupling. I know I'm going to get some comments under this video saying that this isn't really the clean architecture, and I'm not too concerned with that. This is my approach to clean architecture, and I've also seen a lot of similar implementations, and my main focus point here is having an architecture that allows me to be productive without slowing me down too much with unnecessary abstractions. And if you want to learn more about how you can implement this, I recommend that you check out my Pragmatic Clean Architecture course. More than 4,000 software engineers and architects have completed it and they absolutely loved it. You're also going to find it in the pinned comment under this video. Now going back to the template, you might notice my abstractions here, the query handler or the command handler. This is actually mediator behind the scenes. You don't have to use mediator, I just prefer it because it allows me to simplify 
apply my code base. For example, I like to use Mediator's pipeline behavior to implement some cross-cutting concerns like validation or request logging like in this example and I could just plug this into the Mediator request pipeline and have this run as a middleware. The advantage is I can depend on generic types, the T request and the T response which allows me to implement some additional behavior. You could also try to do this with ASP.NET Core middleware but it's going to be a bit more complicated because you don't have type information and it's very specific to a web API whereas with Mediator this is going to work in any type of application. It's going to work inside of a console app, it's going to work inside of a desktop app, it's going to work inside of a background service and it's also going to work inside of an API which is what we have here. Now this template also implements support for authentication. So you're going to see the login use case where I'm fetching the user by the ID, comparing their password hash and then returning a JSON web token and this is made available through the token provider abstraction which is again implemented in the infrastructure layer. So that's it for the application layer. I'm going to close this down. Let's take a look at infrastructure. In here you're going to see our database definition which is our database context implementation. Here I can configure a default schema, I can apply my entity configurations, I'm also going to implement any abstractions like the date time provider. I also have support for authorization. In this case I've added support for permission based authorization and you just need to plug in a couple of additional components to make this work but most of the boilerplate is already there. How you would use this is with the has permission attribute where you define the permission name and you can apply this on a controller endpoint or a minimal API endpoint. I also have implementations for the token provider which is going to create and return a JSON web token if you want to roll your own authentication but I honestly recommend using an existing and proven service like identity server, key cloak, cognito, whatever you want. So that's the gist of the infrastructure layer. We're just implementing any abstractions defined in the layers below and we're also tackling external concerns like the database in this example. Finally I have my web API which is the glue for how all of this comes together. So this is where I'm going to set up my logging, my dependency injection by calling the respective extension methods which I defined in the layers below to somewhat simplify my architecture and this is also where I'm exposing my API endpoints. I also have health checks, we're setting up serial log and request logging. We also have a global exception handler, support for authentication and authorization middleware and now let me show you an example of exposing the API endpoints. Let's say an endpoint for completing attack, I'm using map put to accept my arguments, wrap that into a command and just send it using mediator and process the result. For a query it's going to look very similar except we are sending a query and returning a respective result. Then we have my global exception handler which uses the iException handler interface and you can customize how you want to handle your exceptions here. I'm returning a problem details response but you can decide what works best for your use case. Now I briefly mentioned dependency injection here. So you'll notice these couple of lines of code here which are configuring the application presentation and infrastructure services and this is actually defined in the respective layers below. So I just have a static class called dependency injection in my respective layers and here I'm configuring the services for this layer. So for the application layer I want to configure mediator and my validators which uses fluent validation. In the infrastructure layer I also have a similar dependency injection class which is more involved configuring my services, EF core and anything related to that, health checks and then stuff related to authentication and authorization. So this allows me to somewhat simplify the responsibilities of my API project. A couple of more things you're going to find in this template is centralized build configuration which is managed with directory build props and this allows me to configure the target framework if I want to use implicit users or not and I'm also setting up static code analysis using the sonar analyzer C# -sharp library and I also added support for central package management which allows me to define my NuGet package versions in one place, this file here, and then I can just reference the NuGet packages that I want to use inside of my project. So this is what the project file for my web API looks like. You'll notice I have a package reference which only contains the NuGet package name without the version and the version is managed centrally inside of the directory packages props file. And also the entire project is dockerized and you can easily run it using docker compose which is also going to spin up the external services that we need, in this case seek and Postgres. I also have a couple of architecture tests if you want to have that to enforce the clean architecture. If you want to grab the free clean architecture template it's going to be available from the pinned comment right under this video and if you want to learn more about the basics of clean architecture I recommend that you watch this video next. Make sure to smash the like button on your way out and until next time stay awesome.